So I see two primary benefits. Of course, one is the, the first is the financial benefit that students are able to have more reasonable prices for the amount for the books that they're going to need for their history classes. Uh, but secondly, and maybe even more importantly, I think is the ability that fair dealing gives us to offer a wider range of readings and selections for for our classes. Fair dealing definitely has benefits for the students. I'd, I'd stress two of them. The first, of course, is financial, uh, because the various readings that I would gather and put on you reserve don't have to be put into a course pack. They then don't have to buy a course pack, and, and the cost of those are, you know, $200 quite possibly, and so it certainly saves the students money in that regard. Uh, the second benefit of fair dealing for the students, because again, uh, the librarians have gathered this material and, and put it in a you know, electronic format, is that it's, it's accessible from anywhere. They, they can't lose it, like as they might of course back or forget it somewhere or, or leave it home in Calgary. Uh, and indeed, if they're traveling or if they're anywhere, as long as they, of course, they have internet access, they can access the material. So it's simply more flexible for them to to have an access to it than the actual physical uh, print copies. Fair dealing and e-reserves in particular have really affected in a very positive way how I teach a course. And the examples I think are most at the upper levels where uh, there's an opportunity, opportunity for a topics course. And I'll give you a, a specific example. In the 50th anniversary year of the university, I had the opportunity to teach a course for the first time on the history of higher education. And with that course, we used quite a bit of content from our university, uh, as well as topics very, very much in that time period of the last 50 years. So this is something that we would never have been able to find a textbook on, uh, or if we did find I a collection, it wouldn't have suited us. Well, the courses I teach tend to use lots of different readings from multiple sources of, of political science matter rather than just you know one or two key textbooks and so forth. So it certainly uh, made it easier in the sense that I'm able to pull you know, individual items or chapters or so forth together uh, and rather than put them in a reader necessarily or decide what I want to go in a reader, have the hardworking people in the library uh, scan them and put them on course reserve. And that means that a wide range of material is sort of gathered together in a way I can, I can access. I would, I would really hate <laughs> to, not, to not have that opportunity anymore. And one of the reasons is the accessibility. In the past, I have put items on reserve lots of times, uh, but it's, I think, increasingly difficult for students to get to the library. And e-reserves are so convenient for students who work, uh, who work part-time, full-time jobs, uh, whatever the case may be. I really think that students read more when something is on e-reserve compared to library reserve. Fair dealing does help in planning a class as well, right? Because, I mean, we do have our library budgets for books that we can buy. Uh, I mean, we can't, and, and, and so that, to some extent, limits the range of materials we can consult before we, before we plan our classes. Uh, we can get materials on interlibrary loan, and, and, and the U of L does a good job of getting those materials to us. But that introduces a kind, a, a, a time element to the planning as well, where you have to wait for those sources to come in, especially if you're trying to adjust a curriculum or adjust a, a schedule of lectures of readings on the fly in the course of a semester it makes it very difficult. Mm -hmm.